Hello and uh, welcome to the Microsoft Intune for Education Deployment Workshop video series. My name is uh, Paolo Matarazzo and I'm a program manager in the Intune for Education Prara Group. This is module 4.2, Windows Update for Business Fundamentals. Windows Update for Business will be covered in four parts. This part, which provides an overview of Windows Update for Business. Then, in the second part, we will cover more advanced topics. In the third part, we will provide recommendations for both one-to-one -one and shared devices in education environments. Lastly, we will conclude with the fourth part, Windows Insider Program for Business. So, let's get started. What is Windows Update for Business? Windows Update for Business is a servicing tool. This servicing tool is built on top of the Windows Update service. Windows Update is a service that delivers software updates for Windows and other Microsoft products. This is the same service used by millions of consumers all around the world, servicing billions of devices. The Windows 10 operating system introduced a new way to build, deploy, and service Windows. That is called Windows as a Service. If you recall, prior to Windows 10, Microsoft released the new version of Windows every few years. That traditional deployment schedule, though, imposed a training burden on users because uh, these uh, feature revisions were often significant and uh, the end users required some training to understand and learn the new operating system. Also, the IT pros had to do significant testing for their line of business applications, drivers, etc. That schedule also meant waiting long period of time without any new features. And that doesn't play well in a modern world where the end users and consumers are expecting their devices to offer new functionalities quite often. So Windows 10 now is an operating system that is serviced regularly with the smaller and frequent feature updates to help addressing all of these issues. And Windows 10 is effectively an evergreen operating system. Now, Windows Update for Business is designed to work around this new servicing approach. How do we configure Windows Update for Business? Well, with the Windows Update for Business, we can control the behavior of the client using either Group Policies, Configuration Manager, or the MDM channel, for example, Microsoft Intune. So we can effectively control how and when the devices are updated and the end user experiences as well in relation to the Windows updates. Traditionally, Windows servicing has included several release types. We had a major revision, think about Windows 7, Windows 8, Windows 8.1. We had the service packs, and then we had monthly updates. But with Windows 10, we try to keep things a little simpler. We have two release types. We have feature updates and quality updates. Feature updates add new functionalities twice per year to the operating system. There are released the semi-annually, usually during the spring and the fall timeframe. And sometimes we refer them as H1 and H2 releases to indicate the first half or the second half of the calendar year. These feature updates contain security and quality updates, as well as these new features. Most often, these also translate in updates to the user interface. While feature updates add new functionalities to the operating system, quality updates are aimed at improving the overall stability of the operating system. Quality updates are also referred as cumulative updates. They still include security and critical updates, and optionally, they can also include driver updates and Microsoft updates. Driver updates are non-Microsoft drivers that may be applicable to your devices. For instance, if an OEM integrates with the Windows Update, they can offer their driver updates through the Windows Update service. Driver updates do not include operating system drivers. Those are part of the quality updates. With the driver updates, we may include uh, uh, also firmware and BIOS updates. Microsoft product updates, on the other hand, are other Microsoft products. For example, uh, Microsoft Office Perpetual or Visual Studio. Quality updates are released monthly, typically the second Tuesday of each month, also known as Patch Tuesday. 
When we manage Windows Update for Business via Microsoft Intune, we have two policy types to control the Windows Update client. We have uh, Windows Update Rings. Windows Update Rings are nothing more than a collection of uh, policies, of settings, that controls when and how these uh, updates get installed on the devices. For example, if an end user should be notified to download updates. These settings are pushed to the clients using the standard MDM channel. The other policy type is called the Windows 10 feature updates. Note that this uh, functionality is still in preview, but what it allows us to do is to configure which feature update will be offered to the devices. So with Windows 10 feature updates, the devices update to the version that you specify in the policy. And if a device already runs at a later version of Windows, it will remain at that specific version. The devices won't install a new Windows version until you modify or remove the Windows 10 feature update policy. Windows 10 feature updates policies are designed to work in conjunction with your Windows 10 update ring. They're not designed to be a replacement for Windows 10 update ring. Note that to leverage Windows 10 feature updates, telemetry is a requirement and it must be set with a minimum value of basic. Now let's start digging into the Windows update ring configuration. What you see in the, this slide is a screenshot of the Windows update ring that we can configure via Microsoft Intune. And highlighted here is uh, the servicing channel. Servicing channels are the first way to separate devices into deployment groups for feature updates. And while Windows 10 offers three servicing channels, we have long-term, semi-annual, and insider. With the Windows Update for Business, we can service the semi-annual and insider channel. The semi-annual channel versions that are released in the first half, or H1, have an 18-month life cycle. And uh, if you're using Enterprise or Education Edition of Windows, the devices will be serviced for 30 months. That is different from uh, uh, the H2 release. So if you deploy a Windows 10 H2 release, that would be serviced for 30 months, regardless if you are using Pro, Pro Education, Education or Enterprise versions. As I mentioned before, the semi-annual channel allows us to service our operating systems uh, twice per year. With the Windows Insider, so, though, we can deploy pre-production Windows builds to test machines, for example, so that we can gain early visibility into the next Windows build. And depending on how you configure the Insider channel using the servicing channel functionality, devices will receive uh, updates more frequently than the semi-annual channel. The last thing I want to call out from this slide is that uh, from uh, the update settings configuration of the Windows Update Ring, we can either allow or block uh, either Microsoft product updates or Windows drivers. In the update settings portion of the Windows Update Ring, we also have uh, the deferrals and uninstall period functionalities. With the deferrals, we can specify how many days after an update is uh, released or is published by Microsoft before it is offered to the devices. We can specify deferral for both quality and feature updates. Quality updates allows us to specify a deferral up to 30 days, and feature updates allows us to specify a deferral up to one year. One thing to note though, is that if you deploy Windows 10 feature updates policies, the feature update, the deferral period in the Windows Update ring must be set to zero days. Lastly, with uninstall period, it allows us to configure a time after which the feature update cannot be uninstalled from our devices. Now that we have provided an overview of a Windows Update for Business and the two policy types, feature updates and Windows Update rings, let's jump in our first demo where we're gonna create uh, both policy types and then we will also create a restriction policy for telemetry so that we can uh, leverage the feature update reporting capabilities. Lastly, I will show how to calculate deferrals in case you decide to leverage deferrals rather than using Windows 10 feature updates. We are now in a Microsoft Endpoint Manager Admin Center and uh, I select uh, devices. 
Here we have the two policy types uh, that I just described uh, during the presentation, Windows 10 update rings and Windows 10 feature updates. I select the Windows 10 feature updates. You can see that this is still a preview feature. I will create a, a profile, giving it a, a name, teacher devices, and under feature update to deploy, in the dropdown, I can select uh, the Windows feature update that I want my devices to stay at. For example, for my teacher devices, I will select the Windows 10 2004. I select uh, Next. I select uh, a device group. In this case, I already have a device group for my teacher devices. It's the same uh, device group that I use for autopilot. So select, select next, and select create. That's all there is to do in order to configure feature updates. The big difference here that I want to highlight between feature updates and Windows 10 update rings is that while Windows 10 update rings push a configuration uh, to our devices using the MDM channel, Windows 10 feature updates uh, is a sort of filter, if you would, that would do service side, preventing these devices, these targeted devices, from receiving any feature updates different from the one specified within the feature update. Now, I'm gonna create a profile also for my student devices. For my student devices, I want to use a Windows 10 20 H2 to have that longer servicing period that I mentioned before. Next. And I assign it to a security group containing devices. In this case, I have an autopilot group for student devices. Select, next, and create. Great, now that I have configured Windows 10 feature updates, I want also to ensure that the telemetry is uh, configured and set with the, a value of at least the basic. With that, I go under Windows, Configuration Profiles, and I will create a new profile. The platform is Windows 10 and later. The profile is a device restriction, and select Create. I give it a name, Next. And under Reporting and Telemetry, I can select uh, share usage data to basic, select next. I assign it to the same security groups that I'm using for the feature update feature, student and teacher devices, select next, next, and create. Now my feature update is applied to the devices, telemetry is configured. Now I will move to the configuration of the Windows update rings. So again, I select devices, Windows 10 update rings. Same process, I will create a new profile. I give it a name. For the name, I'm gonna select Windows update for business one-to-one -one devices. This is uh, the same configuration that uh, we saw during the presentation. We have the servicing channel. As you can see, we have a semi-annual channel selected by default. We have semi-annual channel targeted. Uh, this applies only to Windows 10, 18 or 9 and below, which is deprecated. Uh, it's a deprecated setting in the newer version of Windows. And then we have the three different channels for Windows Insider. We will be covering Windows Insider in the fourth part of this discussion about Windows Update. Then I can decide whether to allow or block product updates or Microsoft product updates or Windows drivers. And then we have the deferral period. So for quality in this example, I'm gonna select a deferral time of seven days. So my devices will be offered quality updates after seven days from the publishing date. For feature updates, I can keep the value of zero so that uh, I'm gonna leverage uh, feature updates to control which feature update is gonna be offered to my devices. And then under an uninstall uh, period perspective, I will keep the default of uh, 10 days. We will be covering the user experience settings in the second part of this discussion. So for now, I simply select next. 
I assign this uh, to a group of devices. Let's select uh, uh, our teacher devices, for example. Select, next, and create. One thing to note is once uh, we have uh, a Windows 10 update ring deployed to our devices, if we select it, we have the option to pause either feature of, or quality updates. Uh, if we pause uh, feature updates uh, or quality updates, as a matter of fact, we can also have the possibility to resume uh, whatever we paused. Uh, and let me resume this feature. And we also have the possibility to uninstall either uh, feature updates if we are within the time specified uh, within the Windows Update Ring configuration, or we can roll back the latest quality update. One thing to note also is uh, if we decide to use uh, feature updates, we cannot have uh, the feature update pause, otherwise the feature update functionality will not work. So when uh, would you use uh, the pausing functionality? Maybe uh, a scenario could be when uh, we find out that a specific feature or quality update may be causing issue in our environment. The last thing I want to cover is how to calculate the deferrals. So we saw we created uh, a Windows Update ring configuration with the deferral of feature updates of zero and a quality update deferral of seven days. But what does that mean? When are my devices going to receive a specific uh, feature or quality update? With that, I'm going to open uh, my favorite search engine and uh, search for Windows 10 release information. The first link here in Microsoft Docs is going to point to the Windows 10 release information documentation. Opening that link is going to bring us to uh, this uh, document highlighting uh, in uh, the first part uh, the semi-annual channel. Uh, there's a nice table here uh, indicating uh, the availability date, so essentially when this specific version made it to generally available. This is also the date that you should be using when uh, uh, calculating deferral times for feature updates. So for example, if we set uh, a feature update deferral of 360, 365 days, then my devices will be offered Windows 10 20 H2 starting on October 20th, 2021. If we scroll down in uh, this uh, uh, article, we also have uh, the different uh, tables for each uh, feature update, the different OS builds. So from here, we can calculate uh, the availability date for uh, based on deferrals for quality updates. So for example, the OS build uh, 746 for Windows 20 H2 was released uh, on uh, uh, January 12th, 2021. So if we have any deferrals, we have to add those deferrals to this date to determine when my devices will receive uh, the quality update. This concludes our demo, so let's uh, head back to our presentation. This is also the end of module 4.2, Windows Update for Business uh, Fundamentals. In the next module, we will be looking closer at more advanced topics and uh, the different options uh, that are available to configure the Windows Update for Business user experience settings in Microsoft Endpoint Manager.